Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm G. Muffs Book Aiden. I'm Sophie. And today, by popular demand, mm. we've had a lot of requests for this. We're doing the David Letterman Kyle Carpenter. Yeah. Yes. So got my tissues because <laughs> just been in told, case I've been told it's a little bit emotional. So yeah, I've got my big girl like a, knickers on, and is I'm. It's like a talk show. Yeah, David Letterman is a is a late night. Um, he's not on anymore. But when I lived there, on one channel it was David Letterman, and on the other channel it was Jay Leno. Both mm. equally as good. But I did like Letterman. Yeah. He was in um, New York, whereas Leno was in California. Ah. Yeah. Mm. But yeah. So Ready? yeah, let's have a look. Ladies and gentlemen, our first guest. Thank you, Felicia. Our first guest is the only, only the second living Marine since Vietnam to receive the Medal of Honor, our nation's highest award for valor. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Corporal Kyle Carpenter. How tall is David Letterman? I'm not sure, but I know Obama's about 6'1". I thought he was 6'2". Maybe 6'2". Um. So he's, he's probably about 5'7", isn't he? He only looks That's quite That's the thing, small. like, he might not be as short as he looks, it's just when you're stuck someone tall, he's you always look shorter. Yeah, that's what I was, you know, that's what I was thinking. But I reckon, I reckon he's about 5'7", 5'8". Foot foot yeah. foot probably around yeah. that. This is uniform, isn't it? Um, yeah. Well, it's a great pleasure to have you with us. Thank you so much. Uh, so glad to be here. I will, I will just say, and I hope I, hope I don't uh, anger others, but this <laughs> uniform, the Marine dress uniform, the best there is, Thanks. my friend. I couldn't agree more. I couldn't agree more. How you doing? Excellent. I told the people before the show, I was watching uh, the presentation when you were in the uh, Oval Office, no, not the Oval Office, an, an, another room where they make the presentation, and, and I thought the, uh, well, I don't know, what, what is the room? You were there. East Wing. The, the East Wing. And uh, I thought the, the, the President's remarks before they give you the award uh, were the, uh, lovely. Absolutely perfect, and and uh, then later I saw you talking to a, a gentleman who had won a Medal of Honor uh, or received. I'm not; it's not a contest. He received a Medal of Honor, uh, and he said some things to you that I, that really made an impression on me about who receives the Medal of Honor and what that symbolizes. Do you remember what I'm talking about? And he said that it's not just for you. Th this medal is for everyone who puts on the uniform for the United States. Yes, sir. You know, um, I absolutely feel that way. Uh, I think we all do. Um, you know, this medal uh, is more than, uh, it's just more, it's more than a medal. Mm -hmm. The ideas, uh, the history, uh, it just, it represents so much. Uh, not only does it represent uh, those that have sacrificed, those that have not come back, uh, but our, our rich uh, military history and just everything we've uh, come to mm -hmm. to become such a great nation and up to this point. And, and adds to you and everyone who receives uh, the Medal of Honor uh, a great pressure to represent that throughout your life. So it's a wonderful responsibility to have. Yes, sir. Um, how are you doing physically? You okay? You look great. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, no, I'm doing great. Uh, in the gym every day, I'm a student at University of South Carolina. What are you studying? Uh, going into my sophomore year, and uh, I think I'm going to declare psychology mm -hmm. with everything I've been through. And uh, I took a class uh, this past year, which is my freshman year. Yeah. I really enjoyed it. It really interests me. So. Good. And, and uh, were you uh, in class, in school, there when you received the call? Who, who calls you to announce that you are the new recipient? Well, uh, about a week ahead of time, I got the exact day and time that mm -hmm. the president would call me. So I got out of class. I drove home about 30 minutes. <laughs> uh, my parents checked my brothers out of school. We were all, <laughs> we were all there in the living room to, to share that important, special moment in my life. And uh, we 
we hung up, and I went back to class. <laughs> drove back to class. Yeah. Yeah. Number 21, isn't he? I was going to say, how old is he? I think he was 21 when it happened, so maybe yeah. 22 then. Mm. Oh, is and he's he just come back and... Just gone back to school. Into... So, well, yeah, because obviously he, 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 he thought he would he would be in the military probably for till he was yeah. you know, forty yeah. years old or something. Yeah, and he can't do that. No. And he can't yeah. do that, so he's got to you know think about life and what he want what he wants to yeah, do. And I think psychology is a great one. Mm. Mm. You know Absolutely. what he's been through. I'm sorry, I'm late, Professor. I just got a call from the president. <laughs> uh, I'm not saying it was easy to focus. But, yes. Uh, uh, now, it, uh, I, because I don't know how this works, tell me, d did you know ahead of time, other than the, the, the call, arranging the call, that this was a likelihood for you? Well, there definitely has to be uh, some uh, calls for preparation purposes, and um, they did. They started coming a few months before, started out uh, not so official, just checking on me, seeing how things were going, where I was at in life. Um, and then they kind of progressed to that, that, po that point. Yeah, and uh, since you've received the award, what, what has been the reaction from your friends in college, your family, and their friends, and so forth? I mean, not just since I received the award, since the moment I was injured. Uh, the love and support, uh, appreciation, and just the positive uh, backing that I've had, I just can't say enough about. And really, that just carried over. Uh, since getting the award, but my community and my school and the students and just uh, really since being injured, the letters that poured in from all over uh, the nation is just, it's been really incredible. Uh, Kyle, now when we come back, if you don't mind, uh, I would like you to tell us uh, what it was that transpired. This was in Afghanistan. Yes, sir. And we'll talk a little bit about that. you mind if I ask your age? 24. 24. I'm three times your age. Um, We've, we've had uh, many of the recent recipients on the program, and what I've known is the story is always just about the same. Uh, the Marine Corps, in this case, uh, you're dispatched to a really, really remote part of Afghanistan. It, it takes you a week and a half to get there. And when you get there, you look around and you say, well, where, oh, this, there's nothing here. Is that about what this was? That's, uh, that's pretty accurate. Yeah. yeah. Um. <laughs> You know, we got there. I was injured four months in the deployment. That's the amount of time I went without a shower, uh, sleeping on the ground. All of the water and MREs, which is prepackaged meals, mm -hmm. uh, and ammo, really anything we needed, we had to get uh, a supply drop by helicopter. And is it, is it apparent uh, to you when you get to this uh, area that it is uh, necessary, that strategically it needs to be held? Is it, is it obvious when you Absolutely. get there? Absolutely. I mean, uh, the people uh, over there that, that live under, uh, not so much anymore, because uh, the great job we've done, but just the, uh, the Taliban rule and the strong hand that they use to control the people and the amount of freedom that those people don't have is just really incredible. Right. The other thing that I've noticed uh, that uh, you and your fellow uh, servicemen have in common is that uh, there's a constant attack. Sometimes it's just uh, fire here and there, sometimes it's all day, sometimes it's at the night, but it, you, you, it becomes routine. Whether you're used to it or not, it becomes routine. Very much. Uh, and this was your case, except for one or two days they start changing the ammunition. It now becomes grenades. Am I right about that? Yes, sir. Well, we had uh, spent uh, four months at the patrol base uh, that entire time at the same spot, and we had got a mission to push south where there was no Marines, uh, and it was a strong, uh, I guess, an enemy stronghold. Mm -hmm. uh, we got a mission to push down. Uh, we knew it was going to be a bad fight. Uh, we knew we were probably going to take casualties, but it was necessary to uh, push that Marine presence out further, uh, furthermore, uh, helping the local populations and uh, trying to rid the, uh, that, I guess, that territory of the enemy. Now, w when you get that order, w what does that do to you inside? Are you ready to go? Or are you thinking, oh, damn, we got to go do this? Or, or is it all training? Is it adrenaline? What happens when you realize, okay, we're moving, we have an objective, and we're going to go after it? Well, you know, it's what we were over there for. It's what we signed up for. Um, you're right, it had become part of daily life. Uh, our squad drew the short straw. So, uh, you know, we headed down there. And, uh, you know, shortly after moving in, the first grenade attack came. Yeah. Uh, Tell us where you were uh, when you were injured and the circumstances about that. 
uh, myself, a fellow Marine uh, best friend, we were on top of a roof and we were uh, what's called, we were on post, which is I guess in civilian terms like a lookout position yeah, to protect out. the Marines inside the uh, mud compound because really there's no roofs over there. Um, so uh, we were on top of the little tiny roof that they used uh, to sleep in and uh, the grenade attack came. Uh, I don't remember any of the moments leading up to it. Now, uh, help me out here. In, in the movies, we see grenades being thrown. Were these being thrown or were they being launched? Uh, they were being thrown right oh. into the compound by uh, enemy fighters. So, by so hand. the enemy is fairly close? Uh, very much. Yeah. And uh, how many Marines are then you looking out for the welfare? I would say we only went down there with about 12. 12, okay. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I don't. The only thing I remember for that entire day uh, is the sound of small arms fire, AK-47, their primary choice of weapon, uh, that morning, which is kind of like our alarm clock uh, on a regular basis. Uh, and then the only thing I remember uh, after that is physically how my body felt after I was hit by the grenade. Uh, you're hit when you're up on the roof. Mm -hmm. You're in that position with t two other Marines? Just one. Just one other Marine. Okay, so. Okay, so you know something has happened to your body, and, and your perception is obviously uh, very strange at that moment. It was. I was confused because the last thing I remembered, I was on top of a roof, and I, I didn't know if I was, had been patrolling and stepped on IED, and that's just the last thing I could remember. Um, after, uh, when I got hit, my vision was almost like if a TV didn't have cable and it was just white and gray static. Mm -hmm. Uh, my ears were ringing very loud. I, I couldn't hear anything because my ruptured eardrums. Uh, the next thing I felt was uh, warm water. Uh, felt like warm water was being poured all over me mm -hmm. from the blood loss. Um, You're 22 years old when this happens. 21. 21 years. Yes, old. sir. Uh, and the the, the reason uh, you suffered th these massive injuries. Yeah, how mad is that? 21. No. Unless this is the thing. The you know the these young men and women go into the military at. 18 years old mm. and you yeah, can't even drink till you, you can't even drink alcohol till you're 21 you can't mm. vote you know till you're 18 you you really are thrown in at that the deep yeah. end yeah you know it's amazing how how many actually sign up for their country i know true hero isn't he he is they all are this is because what did you do? You, you put yourself between your, your buddy and the grenade? You fell on the grenade? What was the actual action on your part? From eyewitness accounts and forensic evidence and a post-blast analysis, uh, I uh, shielded and covered uh, the grenade uh, for my fellow Marine. Sorry, but when he says he likes, he's covered it, has he like generally jumped on top of the grenade? Yeah. Yeah, he's took the brunt of the force to, so that his, his, um... Everyone else doesn't get any impact from really. it. Well, it was, the, it was only two of them on the, mm -hmm. the top of the roof. So, he, he's, it's obviously an instinct because you don't remember doing it, but he's, he's obviously gone on top of the grenade, took the brunt of the impact to stop his friend from getting hurt as well. Um, and, you know, Luckily, his friend lived as well. Mm. Yeah. Is, this is fascinating because this is nearly a textbook a case of uh, combat. Is this because of Kyle Carpenter or is this because of Kyle Carpenter the Marine? Well, you know, from the second we step on the yellow footprints at boot camp, it's instilled to us that there's a bigger purpose that the uniform we wear has uh, a rich history and legacy of Marines that have uh, been heroic before us to take care of our junior Marines and that when we get uh, in those bad parts of the world that nobody wants to go to, the Marines to the, our right and left uh, is all we have. Uh, so I would like to say it was me. Uh, I would like to think it was a little bit me, but uh, absolutely the Marine Corps and, and our history uh, and just everything we stand for uh, makes us want to to be uh, courageous and, and do those things. Well, God bless you. I'm going to now.
Uh, if it's all right with you, I'm going to run down the list of injuries you incurred. Is that okay? Yes, sir. You're comfortable with that? Yes, sir. I mean, uh, I'm not hiding it from anybody. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> Bless you. Uh, okay. Uh, countless shattered bones throughout the body. Countless, uh, more than a dozen, something like that? 30 in this arm. Wow. 30 in one arm. I'm an overachiever. <laughs> <laughs> Shrapnel in both legs. Shrapnel in both legs. Carotid artery and neck punctured. Punctured, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, both eardrums ruptured. Lost most of his teeth. Uh, arm broken in more than 30 places. Collapsed right lung. Uh, lost most of your jaw. Is that is that true? Uh, yes, sir. Lost most of his what? Jaw. The jaw. Well, the yeah, almost three years I spent in the hospital, much of that time and most of my around 40 surgeries was uh, facial. Pretty much everything from the eyes down is uh, plates and reconstructive uh, surgeries and fun stuff like that. You, you, you look wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. He does look, he does, he honestly, look really yeah. handsome, doesn't he? Does. he? He's got a lovely smile. You know, I, yeah. I would like to take this opportunity to absolutely credit uh, Walter Reed and the military medicine and, and the staff there who just did a phenomenal job. Lost the vision in his right eye. Uh, there was brain surgery to remove shrapnel, and he had a fractured skull. And now, like this other stuff is not enough, you flatlined three times. In, in fact, at the scene, they That's thought false. you were dead, didn't they? It means he actually died. They had to restart mm. his heart three times. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Jesus. Yeah. Well, when I arrived at Camp Bastion, which was the first combat trauma hospital out of four that I went through, uh, I was labeled. PEA, which uh, I guess is politically correct way. It stands for patient expired on arrival, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. but I was not alive. Uh, d d what was your first uh, uh, moment of cognition af after this trauma? How, how long after the trauma and what was it? About five weeks later, I woke up and uh, the first thing I saw was my mom had uh, decorated my room to uh, fit the Christmas holiday and I saw uh, a stocking for every single one of my family members hung on the, my hospital wall in front of my bed. Well, I, uh, I don't know what to say. I, uh, I wish you nothing but the best in life. Thank you so much. Thank you for your sacrifice. And as a parent, um, I, I hope to God my son does not ever have to go through what you have gone through, but in some way, I hope he is able to manifest the same courage. Thank you so much. Uh, it's a great honor to meet you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Corporal Kyle Carpenter, ladies and gentlemen. You're a Medal of Honor recipient. We'll be right back with Mark Ruffalo. What Look at his amazing. little dimple as well. I know. What I know. an amazing young man. That's quite, that's mad. I didn't, I didn't think I realised he was only 21 when it happened. That's crazy. I knew, I knew he was 21 and I knew that he went over, he, he had over 40 surgeries. Um, 30. Uh, 40 surgeries. But yeah, he's had his whole face rebuilt by yeah, the sound of I it. didn't realise that. Um, and I oh. did know that he, um, he, he flatlined three times. But, wow. That's mental. Yeah. If I was his mum, he wouldn't be leaving the house again. No, exactly. <laughs> I know. It just seems like such like a positive person as well. Like, obviously, it's probably given like a whole new perspective on life as well. Yeah. And you know, he just seems so happy. And you think, you know, what you've been through. Yeah. Some people could get like you know really down about yeah. it, but yeah. he's literally like, just just seems such a lovely guy. Yeah. yeah. Like, like, really, like he probably can only see out of one eye. He yeah. can. He can only. He can probably have really bad height hearing. Yeah. You know, he's, so like yeah, he's got metal he's, plates yeah. so and he's, you know, his arm and legs. And his teeth are fake. That's yeah, I mean, yeah, well, yeah, all his teeth is, uh, have to be re redone. But yeah, I mean, I and mean, the thing is, I don't think a lot of people realise that when you do join the military, they're not just colleagues, you're, you're brothers and sisters, you become yeah. so close because you're doing everything together. Mm. That's and, what you said. Yeah, and you have to, you know, you have to trust that what you're doing is, is right and... and you can't doubt yourself. You Didn't he say the person on the he was on the roof with was his best, best friend? Best friend, yeah, yeah. Mm. And just from speaking to people who are, who have been in the military, they've said you you don't understand the bond you have with 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 your mm. colleagues. Yeah, they, be, they become your brothers. Mm. 
One of my favourite, um, I don't know if you watched, you watch Black Hawk Down. No. The movie. It's an amazing movie. It's one of my make, and it, and it's it's similar story type thing. You know, right. if you ever get a chance to watch it, watch it. It's yeah, really good. got a bit of free time, but it was, honestly, yeah, I might read the book as well because probably yeah. it's got um, a book out. Yeah. And, yeah Does it? So, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. right up your street. Right up my street. <laughs> yeah. Maybe we should do book club. And we'll, we we'll, we'll all read it and then comment. Yeah. Give our opinion. I won't be here for that. <laughs> Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please hit that like and subscribe button and we'll catch you on the next one. Bye. Cheers. Bye.